I believe in Bilbo Baggins. Hillbilly DVD reviews episode number two, The Hobbit Spectacular. Hello and welcome to the Hillbilly DVD reviews podcast. I'm your boy, the Goat, with my cohort. Ah, oh, this is Phil these nuts. What's up, America? Woo! We're here with episode number two of the Hillbilly DVD reviews podcast. That's right. A lot of motherfuckers thought we would die in car wrecks or fucking you know, fall off the face of the earth after our first episode. Nope, we're hold back a whole two weeks later and we got a brand new episode for you right here. I thought that shit too, man. What the fuck are we doing here? You said it was a one time deal. I don't want to fucking do this is bullshit. I'm- no, I said it was the first episode. I didn't say we only did it one time. We gotta keep doing new episodes all the time or else people ain't gonna listen. Like if you just do one fucking episode of a TV show, would you keep Going back to that channel to try to see more episodes? No, man. You got to keep that shit going. These fuckers out there are hungry for content. I guess, man. I like the Star Wars Christmas fucking special. It was a one-shot deal. I thought it was going to be like that. But no. All right, dude. I'm I'm here. I'm with you. Let's let's, let's fucking get this ball rolling. No, all right. I'm, let's fucking, f- I'm hammered. Uh, well, that, that segues us nice into our next little segment here. Let's get into what are you drinking? What are you drinking, Phil D's Nuts? Well, at the moment, I'm I'm drinking rum and coke. I, I'm I'm uh, channeling my inner pirate, not butt pirate, but uh, not there's anything wrong with that. But I, I was I was hitting some Coors Lights pretty hard, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, shit happened. Shit went down, and uh, it kind of morphed into this. Uh, I need to hit some hard shit. So that's what I'm doing right now. How about you? What what are you what are you throwing down on over there? Over here, I kind of fucked around this weekend. I did not get my laundry done. You know, like, so let this be a lesson to your fucking kids out there. They sit around all weekend long. Don't get your homework done until they start working on it Sunday night. You know, you can't fucking, you know, if you don't do the work, you can't play. So, because I didn't get my laundry done, I'm just drinking fucking green tea and water over here. As soon as I get my laundry done, I will have at least a six pack right before I go to sleep. So, you know, what's cool about that. Like that could, that could be a metaphor for anything. That could just be taking care of business. I have no idea if you literally mean you didn't get your clothes washed or if you mean that you got a shitload of shit that you needed to do that didn't get done, but it, it works. I, I like that. Yeah, clothes washing. Well, what happened, it, it wasn't all my fault. It was storming out here, and I didn't, all weekend long, and I didn't feel like carrying fucking clothes out to the wash house fucking <laughs> rain no, and I, shit. I, 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 I don't think nobody wants to hear about your dirty drawer, so uh, let's, let's keep it moving. Up. Yeah. All right. Before we get into the main topic of the show here, let's talk about what have you seen? What movies have you seen in the last week? Whether it be at the theater, on your couch, fucking uh, in the back room of a fucking poker game. What movies have you seen? I haven't seen too much, really. I've been taking some time off. But uh, actually, recently, I, I did see the, the Blu-ray of, of Ted, the unrated version. That's that's about the talking fucking stuff. Teddy Bear, a family guy. What's his fuck? Seth Mc, Mc, uh, fucking Spawn creator? No, no. Uh, Seth MacFarlane. Uh, you know, that, that movie was fucking hilarious, man. I mean, obviously, everybody knows the field. These nuts loves the comedies. I love to fucking get tore up and laugh. And I knew I was going to laugh, but this fucking surpassed my expectations. It was one of the funniest fucking raunchiest R-rated movies I've ever seen in my life. I fucking loved it. And by the way, uh, Seth MacFarlane is quite a good director. He, he directed and wrote the script, and uh, he ain't no hack, man. I mean, he fucking... So he fucking- really got, like, usually when he, what he's known for is his cartoon bullshit. His cartoon yeah. bullshit, he just scribbles some shit on a piece of paper, handed it to a bunch of fuckers over in India to go animate it up. But this time you're saying he really got in and made the movie himself and did all the work, huh? He co-wrote the screenplay. He now he he has directing credits, but you know how that is in the fucking industry. I don't know how hands-on he was, but he it seemed very capable. I mean, it was a serviceable fucking movie. It wasn't it wasn't no fucking you know hack job airplane naked gun bullshit. And not only that, but he fucking keeps it in the family. I mean, you mean you're gonna see people that he's worked with for years who are in this movie who have cameos. It's 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 a really well put together fucking movie. Almost everyone who's ever done a voice for one of his shitty Sunday cartoons is in the fucking movie. And way more funnier than they are on Sunday fucking night. I can guarantee fucking tea that. But uh I endorse it. I think it's one of the best movies of uh, 2012. I think it's going to go down in history as one of the funniest mo- comedies ever. And I'm really glad that he's fucking taking his PG-13 bullshit to an R-rated level. So, you've been watching. Oh, I've seen all kinds of shit. Just to break down on Tuesday, I wanted to see The Hobbit, which we'll get into later. I don't believe that for a second, go. You never saw it. You didn't see that bullshit, did I you? I saw the shit out of it. Fuck me. And we'll go all into it about this fucking little bit. Then on Wednesday, I saw Seven Psychopaths. 
with Sam Rockwell and fucking Colin Farrell, Christopher Walken. Awesome fucking movie, man. I went to the Dollar Theater and saw that shit. Fucking awesome movie, man. Too bad we already did our best or favorite list of 2012 because this would have been on it for me, man. I love the shit out of it. Great throwback to 90s types of movies, movies that came out in the wake of Pulp Fiction, just fuckers blowing each other away, gangsters laughing about it, really dark, sick humor with a lot of great, gory, fucking hardcore, super R-rated fucking action parts, love the shit out of it. It's uh, coming out on DVD and Blu-ray in uh, January, about a month now, so definitely hit that shit up when it comes out near you on fucking home video. Now, I can't I can't wait. Now, let me ask you this now. I want to see it, and I'm sure I like it, but, you know, you, see, you say it's dark and, and funny. Like, I mean, I don't want it to be hokey funny. You know what I mean? I mean, does it does it at least take itself fucking seriously? Oh, yeah, man. Like, like basically where a lot of the humor comes into play is uh, just to peel the layer back a little bit. The, the previews made it look like it was all about kidnapping a dog and shit. That is just, like, the first ten yeah. minutes of the movie and shit, man. And, that's just kind of how they introduced the Woody Harrelson character who plays a gangster. Was really about is Colin Farrell writing a movie, a screenplay called Seven Psychopaths, and he's trying to come up with all these fictional psychopathic characters. But meanwhile, while he's writing a movie, he gets caught up in this fucking revenge plot with Woody Harrelson fucking coming after his buddies and Chris Walken, his fucking old time scam artist. And that's the thing too is like. When you saw the poster, it just had all these motherfuckers' pictures on it. It made it seem like it was this huge ensemble thing. It's really not. Like, some of the people who are on the poster are only in the movie for, like, one scene. Like, really, the main characters is Christopher Walken, Colin Farrell, Sam Rockwell. And, like, those guys, in my opinion, don't get to do fucking good movies enough, especially Christopher Walken this time. Christopher Walken has a great, large role in the movie. He's really great in it. You're going to love it, man. Fucking, I'm not going to spoil nothing because I know you're probably going to see it in about two weeks. But, uh, yeah, man, like, it's really dark, and a lot of fuckers die in it, and that's all I'll say. Well, that's awesome, man, and, th- and th- thanks for vouching for that movie, because, you know, I mean, I, I knew I was going to see it, but like you said, the previews make it look like it's about seven fucking psychopaths chasing around a goddamn fucking pet. And, and, and going off on that, like, Christopher Walken, man, I mean, yeah, he don't do shit these days, but at least when he does, he goes back to his roots. Like, Robert De Niro got to a certain age, and he was only fucking playing grandpas in movies and shit like that. But Walken ain't afraid to still play the gangster here and there. And, I mean, Sam Rockwell's an awesome actor. He like, he does a lot of fucking... He, he's always working, but no one knows who the fuck he is. But I, I happen to be a big fan of Sam Rockwell, so... I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man, and his character, he, 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 like, he, him and Colin Farrell kind of seem like the main characters at first, and Chris Walken comes into it, and you're going to love it, man. Like, like, fucking all those guys really get to shine and really get to play great roles in it. And then, because I love Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson did a great job in it, too, man. I went home, and I finally got around to watching the Blu-ray of the Woody Harrelson movie from earlier this year called Rampart, about a fucking S- Rampart S- cop. Saw it. Yeah, man, very fucking dark, twisted, fucking crooked cop bullshit. Close out this segment. I saw one more movie on Thursday night. Holy shit, what a fucking nightmare. I saw Alex Cross starring fucking Tyler Perry from Tyler Perry's Medea and shit. Oh my god, what a fucking... You saw that shit? I saw the shit out of it, man. I saw it at the fucking Dollar Theater. I was, it was the last day for it. I was like, I'm not going to let this... Because I, I just knew, man. I knew once that shit hit DVD that I would never fucking ever rent that shit or watch it. or I, I just didn't have the strength to pick it up and put it in my DVD player. So I went down the dollar thing and checked it out what a fucking night first of all man now i know you are somewhat of a fucking tyler perry fan you like his movies the twists and turns and whatnot it's a guilty pleasure i admit i admit yeah and like and that's the thing is i think tyler perry is good when he's making his own movies but this time he really tried to show people that he was a super active motherfucker and oh my god he fell flat on his face like i really want to go in being a believer and shit I really went to see this movie because I saw, I heard that it was real ridiculous, so I wanted to see it from my own eyes. And man, this motherfucker cannot act at all. Like, this fucker, like, he'll be acting in a scene, and it's not even like he's acting, it's just like he's making faces at the camera and shit, trying to act all serious. Shit, that's a shame. You know what, it sounds like he tried to get out of his comfort zone and shit the bed. And he and he ha- he has one, and he's good in his little microcosmo universe. But I, I get you know I guess when it's a fucking quote unquote real movie and a real you know real character. Well, that, is. well, that's the thing too, man. It's like like it, they did him like I don't want to put all the blame on Tyler Perry, but fucking Rob Cohen who directed Triple X directed this shit, man. He did not do Tyler Perry any favors. This is the most ridiculous goddamn movie ever fucking made. Eddie <laughs> Eddie Burns is playing his fucking 
cop sidekick and shit, and they suppose they grew up and shit, and they're boys, and the, and the relationship of these two, there's like zero chemistry before between these guys, and they're always talking nonstop how they grew up on a schoolyard together and shit, and I think there's like, yeah. That, that, that's a shame, but, but like you said, you know, th- thanks for giving Tyler the benefit of the doubt. I mean, somebody greenlit this bullshit. Someone put a stamp of approval on it. It can't be all his fault. It can't be. So. Oh, no, I'm fucking Matthew Pop. Like, when you... Because it's based on the, the movies that came out before with fucking Morgan Freeman playing the Alex Cross character. So this is kind of like some prequel bullshit showing when he was just a regular cop before he was in the James, FBI. James Patterson novels, right? Yeah, James right? Patterson novels. I'll tell you what, James Patterson is fucking spinning in his grave right now after they made this movie. Like... Fucking Matthew Fox, like, you think it's going to be like the Morgan Freeman movies where it's about a serial killer and even the previews may look like... It's not about a serial killer, it's about a hitman. Like, they really try to take it to a James Bond level. Jean Reno plays an international French villain and all this shit. And Tyler Perry's going after this hitman who's killing everybody and shit. And fucking Matthew Fox, man, the whole movie, he's bug-eyed, he's going crazy. I, I will say one thing. Tyler Perry, on a scale of 1 to 10 of badness, was about a 7.5. Matthew Fox about a 9.8, man. This motherfucker, I thought he was a good actor, man. He was been in a bunch of movies, TV shows. This motherfucker cannot act his way out of a wet paper bag. Oh, shit. It, and what's even worse, they keep like playing him up like he's a badass. And fucking Matthew Perry looks like he's got some goddamn colon cancer in this movie. He's so skinny. He's so albino looking. Like... I don't know, man. Like it just was ridiculous. <laughs> that, dude, that, 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 that's disappointing, man. And and you know that that begs the question: if if, if any of you out, out there are astute readers, is is this based on a Patterson novel? Because you know you know sometimes sometimes they'll take a fucking series based on books, but then they'll just do their own movie, like like the Born fucking Legacy. I, yeah, like, a, like, like like sometimes were, they take some shit made on the books, but then they just run with it and fucking yeah, yeah, make up some cause, bullshit. Because the Borns was based on books, but I'm pretty sure the one with fucking Jeremy Renner was not based on the book. I think he just took the character around with it. So I, I, I think I think that one was based on the fucking back of a cocktail napkin that somebody wrote down and scribbled down. <laughs> in, 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 in some fucking wee ho bar <laughs> like in Sunday night. Hey, did you did you know that Jack fucking Reach Around is based on a series of books? I, just I, I did, and, and I heard the fans are in an uproar because Jack Reacher, the character, is described as Jack, a... Jack Reach Around. Yeah, Jack Reach Around is a big... Man, six foot five, and then they get tiny ass Tom Cruise to come in and play the no, role. No shit. I mean, I mean, like as as much as I love the first Batman with fucking Michael Keaton. I mean, any you know, Michael Keaton is Batman. Tom Cruise is Jack Reach around. I mean, who, he's who's getting that as fuck? fucking Tyler Perry is fucking a young Morgan Freeman. Who's coming up with this shit? <laughs> What, what, what world are we living in? This is insane. I mean, I'm, I saw the extended trailer of Jack Reach around a few months ago, and I'm I'm watching him, and he's like he's like you know surrounded by six guys, and he's short as fuck, and you know no camera trickery in the world can make his hobbit ass look fucking big. And it was just, I mean, of course it's PG thirteen. What the fuck do you expect it's gonna be? It's fucking movie magic at its worst. Oh man, if, if Jack Reach is coming for you. You deserve a PG-13 rating, motherfucker. If Jack Reach is coming for you, don't worry about it, motherfucker, because he ain't going to do shit. <laughs> Fucking step on him. <laughs> I t- I t- the final word on Tyler Perry's action hero, though. Okay, like, if he wants to try to be a real actor and do action and all this shit, man, like, I will support him, but he's got to go direct a video, man, because, like, he's a... He, like, as an action hero, man, he acts even worse than fucking Steven Seagal. Like, if he wants to be committed to the game and get some real action fans, do some directed video ones, like, where you whip some motherfuckers. Because he is a large man. Like, you can buy him as, like, whipping some ass. But, you know, but, I... But, but, like, Blade Trinity, right? Just yeah. Wait, some, go, go, go to DVD, go to Blu-ray, but don't don't make it a big old... Exactly. Because, like, I'll put it this way. Like, like his acting would be fine for a directed video movie that plays on Showtime at midnight, premieres like at 2 in the morning, or maybe in a soap opera, but you can't be in like a 50, 60, 70 million dollar movie. Like, there's a lot of people's jobs on the line and shit. This was very irresponsible yeah, yeah. for the producers. Heads are Tyler roll. Perry. Yeah, man, a lot of people lost their jobs over this shit. Not, not Tyler Perry, because he's, but, but I don't think he'll be able to do another one of these mainstream fucking movies anymore. Well, he's going to have to stick with fucking Medea and all his other exactly. shit. Exactly. Well, it's going to be up to him if he wants to become a real actor or not, but you know, maybe he'll stick with it and do some movies to get some more fans, or maybe he'll just run back to being in a cheap wig and shit. I don't know. The jury's still out on Tyler Perry, but I mean, 
you know, like, I actually hope he proves people wrong and does, like, a whole bunch of directed video action movies with fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin so that, like, these motherfuckers, you know, they don't get their final word on Tyler Perry, but I will recommend the movie to you. See this movie when you're drunk, red box this shit, because you will laugh your ass off. There's a fucking scene where Tyler Perry's all happy because his wife uh, just revealed that she going, she's pregnant with her third child to sub- celebrate. He takes her out to a nice dinner and shit. But then, like, he gets all surly, like, they're at the bar waiting for the table and shit, and he starts having a few drinks, he gets surly, he starts joking around, but making some real inappropriate jokes, he starts telling her that the baby in her stomach is worthless, and he's not gonna buy a meal for this baby and shit, it's just real fucking off-the-cuff bizarre humor from Tyler Perry. I mean, is that supposed to be edgy funny? <laughs> I don't know. I, did he know the camera was even rolling? <laughs> I, 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 like, to, it sounded like some shit Mel Gibson would be saying on the telephone at, like, three exactly. in the morning when his shit faced <laughs> You deserve to be raped, you fucking whore. <laughs> Dressed like that. This ba- I haven't even seen this baby on a sonogram yet, but I know it's worthless, goddamn. I know it's worthless. Man, so- dude, sounds like Tyler Perry's too big for his britches. He needs to get back to doing some fucking one-man plays where he plays 50 different characters and then makes a fucking movie about it. Shit. All right, man, I hear you disappointed, but I'll check it out and let you know. And oh, you, you, you'll you laugh your ass off, especially yeah. if you watch it drunk, man. You'll be I'm fucking... I'm going to get ripped and watch that shit. Yeah, you, you got to be it. drunk. All right. All right, so moving on to our main topic today, I believe in Bilbo Baggins, where ah. this is the hot Hillbilly DVD reviews, Hobbit Spectacular, just in time for the holidays. Everybody's going to love it. We're going to get all these new fans because they heard us talking about the Hobbit and shit. So we're going to break into it. Before we jump into the movie, there's a lot of controversy resolving around this whole new trilogy that Peter Jackson's coming on, and we're just going to dive into it, do a brief recap of the, the road to the Hobbit, if you will. So, it was a, it was a long tumultuous journey, to exactly. be sure. And and it all began with the fucking tears and the bloody ass of one Guillermo del Toro. Go into this a little bit, Phil. What happened to Guillermo del Toro? He was making these terrible fucking Hellboy movies, these cheap well, movies that well, nobody cares. I mean, I mean, I mean, you you know more than me. I mean, I'm I'm not even a Guillermo del Toro fan. I never even heard of the fucker until Hellboy. Uh, I mean. You know, he, he's a fucking uh, a Hispanic barrel ass who, who who has a who has a very unique vision of making movies. Oh so, yeah, he did Hellboy one and two. I didn't think they were bad movies. I fucking love Hellboy. I love reading those comic books too, man. Uh, he fucking did some other bizarre shit. He did Pan's, Pan's Labyrinth, Labyrinth, which was critically acclaimed, but I thought it was a pile of horse shit. I did too, man. It was so boring movie. watching that general guy just shoot everybody in the head. I've never seen a rated R movie that could pass for a G rated Hallmark movie of the week in my life that was fucking horseshit and and yeah i mean come on yeah i mean don't, don't don't give me the shit that he's an artistic genius i mean anybody can fucking come up with that shit come on he you know like like this motherfucker was basically a sequel director directing shit like blade 2 and stuff and i guess he thought that you know because peter jackson left the hobbit alone he was tired of it he wasn't gonna make no more lord of the rings i guess guillermo del Toro thought he could swoop in there but at the end of the day he just did not have enough clout what happened was the rights got passed around and basically like warner brothers decided they was going to do the hobbit movie and they were like sorry guillermo del toro but we want to go all in. We want to fucking recreate the magic of Lord of the Rings, make another eighteen billion dollars. So we gotta have all the key ingredients. Right, right. yeah. Well, that, that, that's that's actually exactly right. That's where I was going. I was gonna say that Guillermo was more of an artist. And if you remember Blade Two, it wasn't about the story of Blade continuing. It was all about how Blade's cape flows. You know, he's all he's all about the fucking the, the visuals. So so he so he comes along. And he's like, okay, you want me to do the Hobbit? We're gonna do a Guillermo del Toro style, which which is not necessarily a bad thing, depending on who you are. But, but yeah, basically he was gonna take the same old Lord of the Rings shit, but he was gonna freshen it up, pick the yeah. cast himself, make exactly. the decisions. Yeah. Right, he's gonna do his monsters his way, his Hobbits his way, and and then, and then the producers were like, oh shit, we should have just hired some fucking idiot off the street because we don't want a Guillermo del Toro movie. We, we don't, you know, we, we no. Want, we want, to, we want anyone to. We want a yes man, basically, right? Want we want yes. an exact carbon copy. Hit that shit, fucking press Xerox, spit it out, and we want Lord of the Rings all over again. So fucking, what happened was, was they went back. It turned out it was just their luck. Peter Jackson, his career was in the toilet after making Lovely Bones. He tried to go all serious and shit, and it turned out nobody wanted to see his serious artistic bullshit. So they were able to get Peter Jackson back on a cheap. They stabbed uh, fucking Guillermo del Toro in the back. They yeah, fucking threw yeah, him. 
definitely, man. He got screwed. Yeah, man, threw him out the fucking back door, left him, you know, kicked his ass out. Peter Jackson came in, and so, okay, great, man, we got all the same elements, they went in, they, like, okay, if you don't know about The Hobbit, it happens before Lord of the Rings, it's prequel, like, like, a long time before, but Warner Brothers is like, we gotta get all the original cast to sign up Elijah Wood, you know, all these fuckers who, like, weren't even fucking supposed to be in the story, according to the books, but they're like, we just wanna tell fuckers Lord of the Rings is back, they got every single character, actor, whatever, to reprise the role, even fucking Andy Serkis got his ass back to fucking... Uh, Circus. <laughs> fucking gobble that golem shit out, fucking spit gobble. that shit out. Like, like no other motherfucker could breathe and suck into the microphone like he did, <laughs> fucking do right, an annoying right. and, goblin and, voice. And, 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 <laughs> I, I, right, no, man, and, and even that was a struggle, too, because they were, they were running around at the last minute. None of these fuckers had contracts. Why would they? It was Lord of the Rings. No one even thought about the Yeah, they, they signed three picture deals ten out. years ago, made the movies, everybody forgot about it, but here we are recreating magic right. and shit. Yeah, so, you know, Ian McKellen, you gotta come back. Uh, fucking uh, uh, Roto Baggins, <laughs> Elijah Wood, you gotta, you gotta come back. You gotta come back. And li- I like the goat was saying, man, apparently some of these characters weren't even in the book The Hobbit, but they no. just wanted to recreate that world so fucking bad. So e- fucking everybody's bad. back. So, everybody. So you got all the actors back. You got Peter Jackson back. The studio is like, we can just repackage this shit into being Lord of the Rings all over again. Let's fucking do it. And then, so, great, we're going to make this movie. All oh, some more problems happen. Peter Jackson, being from New Zealand, wants to make all his movies in fucking New Zealand. He was like, let's go to New Zealand. Turns out at the time, New Zealand, because, like, they was basically, like, the cheap Australian shit, like, they were making all the movies over there. They were getting some clout and power as a place to make movies. The the actors over there, they had a union. They was coming up like, hey, man, it's a perfect time. We want these, like, we want to get a raise. We want to do all this shit. They want to make some more money because, you know, Lord of the Rings is a license to print money for whatever fucking reason. So they're like, we're going to get a big payday. A union battle came out. The movie studio said, fine, then we're not going to shoot in New Zealand. And like, and then fucking the New Zealand people turned against the actors' union and shit. It was like, fuck you, you're fucking up. Peter Jackson came out like, Peter Jackson. He's got all the money in the world. He's got so much money. He's he's running around at an auction. He bought an Iron Man suit that they use in the Iron Man movie and shit. Like he he's just like a fucking nerd with money. He's telling these broke motherfucking actors, hey man, fuck you. You're gonna ruin New Zealand all this shit. So what happened? They went into the legislator. Warner Brothers walked in. They told the government of New Zealand like, this is what you're gonna do, motherfuckers. Not only did they not do the union contract, they got New Zealand fucking government to say anybody who works in the film industry from now on is not an employee with any sort of rights. Like, fuck, like, whatever contract. They just said point blank. There is no contracts. People who work in the movie industry in New Zealand, they have no rights. So you could do anything now when you make a movie in New Zealand. You can have motherfuckers shoot films for fucking 18 hours a day. You could fucking tell motherfuckers jump out of a plane with parachute instead of blanks. You could shoot them with real yeah. guns. You could do any. Like, it's, it's, it's like Twilight Zone all over again. You could have fucking kids die in a helicopter. Exactly, man. Anything goes, motherfucker. Anything goes. And, and listen, but you got to admit, man, this is insane to say these people have no rights as human beings. If they're going to work on a movie, you, like, you could just whip them. You could fucking make him eat dog shit on camera. Like, you can, like, like I can't believe that something like this happened. It's it's awful, man. I mean, it's, they're basically saying that, you, like you said, you, you have no rights. Yeah, you, if, you, if you want a job, we can do anything we want to you. We Fucking, we right. can wrap barbed wire around your dick, and you got to do it because we're making Peter Jackson's The Hobbit. <laughs> Right. And, and if you don't like it, quit. We'll hire some other Kiwi. And yeah. if you don't like it, quit. We'll hire some other fucking Kiwi. Well, right. I don't even think it's a problem with people. This member of the population of New fucking Zealand. I don't even think it's a problem with like, hey, if you don't like it, quit. I think they're just going through motherfuckers like killing them. <laughs> like, right. the, the, it, it, there's it, probably it, a it, mass grave. When they had them throw them in a fucking ditch of bodies. I don't it, know. There's probably like a mass grave over there from everybody who. <laughs> It's a it's, it's it fucking holocaust in New Zealand. We don't even know about it. It's going on right fucking now. It's World War II all over again. It's fucking insane. All um, right, so so the quest to make this family whatever fantasy fucking movie to make the merchandise sales to put cups on it and fuck you know like like okay we've already had Guillermo del Toro got backstabbed. Fucking nobody has any rights of union. So now it's clear sailing to make the Hobbit right. All wrong. See, fucking James Cameron got in Peter Jackson's head and told him, hey, man, the way we make movies ain't good enough. I did Avatar, and I want to push some technology bullshit farther. We're going to shoot the movie in super fast speed, 48 frames a second. 
where most movies are shot in traditional 24 frames a second. So this shit's going to be twice as fast. The resolution's going to be great and clear and fucking everything's going to move so much smoother. So they shoot this movie in this new 48 frames format. They didn't know what the fuck they was doing. It comes out. Nobody likes the way it looks. It looks like a fucking PlayStation game and shit. Like, it, it does. It does. Now, now any, of, any of you up there who haven't seen the movie or who don't know what that means... It's basically like watching a high-def television with your motion flow on. And I've never met any motherfucker, hillbilly or no hillbilly, who's ever preferred motion flow. You know what that shit is? That's the shit where it's all speeded up. It looks like you're fucking watching a goddamn video game or you're watching fucking TV on fucking crypto fucking crystal meth it, it is it, not good it looks like you're watching fucking keystone cops from the 1940s yeah yeah i mean yeah, you're no you're right because the whole idea is supposed to be realistic this is how people move but for some reason it always looks like it's fast forward it always does it's not good and they shot the whole movie this way you don't have a fucking choice you got to watch the whole movie and basically what motion flow fucking frame rate it's exactly awful. that's the way they shot it with the camera now they're doing this trick now where they're, they're they don't want to lose all the business so some of the theaters you can go to and they're going to put it in regular 24 frames well guess what you're only seeing half the fucking movie then because like you're only seeing half the frames so you can pay to go, fucking you know go see it look like a normal movie but you're not seeing what they really fucking shot or whatever so no, no shit and 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 if, if there was such a controversy why why is it one or the other if they're so confident it should only be F- one. F- fucking James Cameron went out and said, this is the way movies going to be from now on. You have to accept it. And all these nerds are behind him saying, because, you know, these nerds, man, they have their iPads and their computer monitors. And, and the, you know, it's like in order to get you always buy a new computer monitor or HDTV, they up the refresh rate. They say, oh, it looks so much smoother and all this bullshit. So nerds are like, yes, we're on the side of technology. Make that shit faster. Rub your hand across your fucking face really fucking fast and look it out your own eyes. Does it look crystal clear? Does it move smooth fucking so smooth? No, there's motion blur on it, motherfuckers, just like a 24 frame camera. Our eyes are trained to fucking pick up motion blur. We see motion blur when shit moves fast in front of our fucking eyes. So why do you want to tr- create a movie format that's going to look completely alien to what we've seen with our eyes our entire fucking life? No shit. 99% of the movies I watch, I watch fucking drunk. This ain't no secret. It's hard to do. Why would I want to watch a movie that makes it even harder to watch drunk, all right? My eyes and brain already have to readjust to 24 frames per minute. I can't handle this bullshit. And I'm sure my fellow hillbillies would agree. It's bullshit. It's too fast. It sucks. And it looks like horse shit. It looks awful. Why would they do this? I fucking read some. I read some reviews before it even opened. They did some of that pre-screening bullshit, like at Comic Con or the fuck they did. And people, people saw like a ten-minute clip from the film. Ten. That's a long time, right? Ten minutes nonstop, right? And they didn't like it. They didn't. They, like it. they all walked out, no, all pissed no. off. The movie and, and, got a bad reputation, right, or whatever. Already, already. And Peter Jackson says, "Well, he says, well, <laughs> it takes a long time to adjust." They should have sat down for more than 10 minutes. I think fucking 10 minutes is plenty of goddamn time. What the fuck? I can tell about? it looks That's shitty within 20 crazy. seconds, really. We don't shit, man. Fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm walking after five seconds of that shit. But so so anyway, so so the the, the road to making it. The road to Hobbit was a bumpy wow. one, just like the journey. So what what's on the checklist? First of all, we've got a fire director. Check. We got fucking people meant to work under slave wages and inhuman conditions, check. And then we got a fucking $250 million movie that looks like the opening to a fucking PlayStation 3 video game check. <laughs> Wait, are you sure it's not a PS2 game? That's pretty funny. I, I, yeah, actually, I think it is PS2. And not the original PS2, like that little cheap one that they sold in Walmart after the fact where the little top popped open. You had to put the disc in that way and you didn't have the tray anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we showed all of you know. We talked about it. We just to you know give you a frame of mind that the backs that were broken to make this fucking epic for you and your hillbilly family to go in and chomp popcorn too. We're gonna take a little break right now, but the show ain't gonna stop because we know there's a lot of motherfuckers out there who really don't care one way or another about Hobbit nonsense. We're gonna play the audio of one of our YouTube movie review clips in order to switch it up here we're going to talk about a uh horror movie here we did this fucking we did the fucking blurry review of the house of the devil back when our channel first opened in 2011 here's the audio of it if you like what you hear fly on over to youtube.com slash hillbilly dvd reviews you can see it with the fucking picture and shit but here's the audio for now hopefully you like enough to go check out our fucking other youtube videos 
But enjoy the review of House of the Devil, fucking directed by T. West. Enjoy. We're handsome, too, so enjoy that shit. Yeah, you can see our smiling fucking mugs and 720p resolution on your fucking, I don't know, your iPad, your computer, your fucking dickhole, whatever technology you got kicking, you can see us on that way. Still looks better than The Hobbit. We still have better fucking production value in a fucking sweaty garage than some motherfuckers did over in New Zealand that's blowing $300 million. (laughs) Enjoy, everybody. We'll be back. Welcome, America, 50 states, United States of America, to the greatest show on earth, Hillbilly DVD Review. Today, we're going to uh, review a House of the Devil, motherfucker. Scary ass movie. Scary, independent movie, but it's fucking great, man. It's better than the garbage you pay to see at the theater. Man, I would pay 13 bucks to see that in the theater over fucking Transformers Part. Man, fuck Transformers. I want to see good shit. I want to see fucking weird masturbatory fantasies (laughs) of Michael Bay. Exactly. I'm going to start this off, and I'll hand it over to the gout here. This movie hits home for, for D's because uh, back in the day, actually, my parents actually did believe in uh, satanic cults. They did. And, uh, and, and, I, and by proxy, <laughs> I believe in satanic cults. And the, and the, whole, the whole impetus of this movie is, is going back to the 70s and 80s where, where uh, people in America believe in this shit. It even says you know on the back, mean? during the 1980s. What's the first line, right? During the 1980s, over 70% of American adults believed in the existence of abuse of satanic cults. And unfortunately, your parents are one of man. M- Mr. and Mrs. D's were full-time believers of satanic cults. No, they they weren't sa- they weren't satanic worshippers. They were just scared as fuck. They just they just lived to hate satanic. Man, I know, I know. So, so much that they burned your goddamn Masters of the Universe, He Man, in the fucking word word. And, and what did they say after they burned that shit in the fireplace? I said they screamed. They said these fucking action <laughs> figures screamed <laughs> in the fire. They said they screamed in the fire. They said he man Skeletor, man at arms were screaming demonic screams in the fireplace. The only thing man at arms was screaming was hell, but he man Skeletor was burning the shit out of me, man. <laughs> the point is, the point is, this movie is is not only a throwback to the fucking eighties movies, but it's a throwback to the culture of the time because yeah. this is a true this statistic. Is, this know? this whole movie is a throwback to the late seventies, early eighties. 80s. Just the culture in general, you know what I'm Everything. saying? Everything. Yeah, like, yeah. like, it doesn't necessarily say what year it's set in, but it looks like it's set in goddamn 1979. Girl, girl, girl has a Walkman on the whole girl movie. Girl has a oh, Walkman man. on. Tape, tape old Walkman. old songs in it. Yeah. You know, everybody's dressed all fucking old school. Yeah. And basically what the plot of this is, is this girl, who's a college student, she has to go... Uh, babysit a kid she thinks well at the house right but because she she's desperate for money she's about to rent a room for like 300 bucks a month but she don't have the money e- et's mom wants to rent her this room e. but she's mom come, gotta right. come up with the 300 bucks that's how you know it's over another cost yeah, 300 yeah. bucks to rent a fucking so, so, apartment so right off the bat we got the stakes that are hot you know what i'm saying yeah, that's a good way to start money. a movie you know because why does she need to get out of her dorm room into apartment because her dorm room uh her fucking room roommate is slut, slut. This bitch is sucking dick. 24 is running on her. This bitch yeah. is a scandalous fucking whore. Yeah. And this girl, this girl, the main girl in the movie, she's just a good girl. She just wants to live in a place yeah. where ain't no dick slamming into right. no vaginas, goddamn. So anyway, she takes a babysitting job. She shows up this creepy old motherfucker. Oh, Francis. Tom, oh, Tom, Tom, Tom Noonan? Yeah, a.k.a. Yeah. Francis Dollar High from Manhunter. Yeah. <laughs> he comes out with his cane and his old arthritic ass. He's tall. Ass. He's old as fuck, <laughs> he's man. He's old as fuck. Man. He got some long-ass gray hair. But, but, I mean, motherfucker's got a smooth voice, though. Got he does. Fight. He does. This guy's hey, a good hey, actor, man. Yeah, he, he plays is. A, he, he plays is. a fake Frankenstein in uh, Monster Squad. Yeah, he did. Anyway, he says, okay, I kind of bullshit you here. You're not going to be babysitting a kid. You're going to be babysitting my mom. Mo- mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. Huh? She's old. She's fucked up. We got her locked up in the attic. Don't even fucking worry about it. But I need you in the house. But he's so case... desperate. He doubles her salary. Yeah, he yeah. said, I'll pay you 50 bucks instead of 20. No, actually, he pays you 400 instead of 200. Oh, is that much? Goddamn. Uh, yeah. Which is a lot in the 80s. Right. Yeah, you could buy some Transformers, some Lionel Richie albums. You could, you could buy like three sound waves in the box for oh, four hundred bucks. Three sound waves, <laughs> at least, and, and right. maybe even throw in a fucking wheel jack with that shit. <laughs> so anyway, she's in this house alone, and shit starts going weird. Creepy noises, fuckers outside. There's it's, it's there's subtle a, though, you know. Yeah, what I mean? there's it's a creepy subtle. fucker. She tries to order a pizza. Shit gets fucked. I don't want to spoil it, but shit gets fucked up. Her friend who gives her a ride. Uh, don't 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 spoil him. that shit, man. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I was. I this, is a, this is a horror movie, goddammit, and horrible things are going to happen. That's why I like this movie. It's slow. 
which is actually good in this case because it builds up the tension, gets you fucking scared, gets you ready to piss your pants, goddamn. Yeah, this this ain't a party movie. This is a sit down by yourself, lights out, doors get closed. Get scared. Movie. Right. Way better yeah. than that paranormal activity bullshit. Better, Way that movie fucking bullshit. better than that. Yeah. But it, it, it's some drawn out, suspenseful terror. 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 I it's a uh, terror. Yeah. Terror. Terror. I'll give this movie because it is fucking scary. I'll give this shit an 8 out of 10. Damn, I'm going to give it a 9. Word. 9 out okay. Oh, man, I was scared. I, I don't blame you. I was scared I don't blame you, goddamn. And as a picture and sound, they shot it on some uh, real good high-def video. It looks crystal clear, but it also, I'll give them credit, they shot it on video, but it looks it's like old twist. film. Yeah, yeah. there's a twist to it. So, it looks, like to a, it looks old as shit. It looks old as but, shit, but it looks, it's clear. It's clear old, The right? sound is good. Yeah. On, on picture and sound, I really, I am going to give it an 8 out of 10. I was going to give it an 8 to go. All right. I'm war with you, man. Special but. features. They got the commentary with the director, uh, T. West. Yeah. They got oh, the T. Ty West is great, man. T. He's, West. He's the man. Uh, uh, everything, man. Uh, they, 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 the they give, yeah, man. They give a little interview of uh, why he came up with it and shit like that. I mean, yes. they, I mean there's it's, some good it's insight. Really, it's really fucking good. I'll give him a 9 out of 10 on special features. Uh, I'll give him a 7, but I like him a lot. It's, it's yeah. good. That's good. Hey, anything, anything over 6 in the hillbilly world is gooder and shit. And this is, you know, this is the Blu-ray, but there also was a DVD slash VHS combo that came out of this. Only available on Amazon.com. I didn't get that shit because I wanted the Blu-ray, not the goddamn DVD. I don't even have a, a VCR anymore. I fucking threw mine out when I was Well, you fucking... think you think you're too good for uh, VHS now? No, man. I was mad at my girlfriend at the time, and I threw it at her. So that's it for House of the Devil. It's real fucking good. Real package on the Blu-ray. If you can hunt that VHS down, it's cool to have a collector down. It comes in a big box, just like the old days. But but don't but watch we, it. Keep it up wrapped up. It's yeah, keep that wrapped up. The collector's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But keep this Blu-ray and watch this, because this is the yeah. best version of it. Good good sound, good screen. Fucking remember, watch it alone. Watch with the lights out. Watch with the girl by your side. And get scared, motherfucker. I'll, I'll probably get laid. <laughs> you probably get laid, because them bitches be jumping in your arms if hey, you're so hey, man, scared hey, and shit. There's, there's some demons in that movie, too. You trying to spoil it? What the fuck? One last thing, uh, we want to give a word of advice. If you go to Walmart and they got a McDonald's in there, don't eat at that fucking Walmart McDonald's because I don't know what happens, but that shit doesn't taste nearly as good as a real McDonald's. Shit is all they got, they got the fattest bitches working in the Walmart McDonald's serving up the sloppiest ass fries. It, it, it don't taste we, the same, it do it. Shit it. No, no. It's like, it is what it is. It's Walmart McDonald's. I'll go one step further. If you're in a super Walmart and there's two restrooms, one in the back, one in the front, Go to the back. Don't go to the one in the front. Yeah, because them motherfuckers are just spraying feces all over the goddamn it's walls. It's almost like they're taking a hose to their ass and spraying the fucking shit on yeah. the wall. How does that happen? When I <laughs> shit, when I shit, it drops straight into the These motherfuckers, they're acting like they got a super soaker full of shit just spraying all over the wall. It's like they got that a shit ass on their back or some <laughs> shit. I'm, I, I don't get it. It's anyway, crazy. stay away from that shit, all right? But so, Walmart's usually good. Yeah, I like Walmart. Yeah, all right, too. China Mark. Bye. <laughs>
the action scenes start and the the really fast when it's fast motion fuckers flinging swords and all this shit yeah it is clearer than like what you would see on a traditional movie but what happens is like the majority of this movie is some boring dialogue shit when people are just sitting and talking and they turn their head left or right like to talk to the person next to them it looks so strange man like they just like they'll you see them it's like they'll start to move their head and all of a sudden their move their head will be like flipped over to like you know the other position like it's just weird man it just looks like people like it looks like jump cuts like non-stop on the slow motion not the slow motion but the the regular you know just regular sm- small little dialogue scene so it was hard to take you know because like you're just like you're just watching shit sputter and stutter all over the screen and shit so this 40,000 frames, I'm sorry, it did not work. Maybe if there's a combination of technology where they can shoot the dialogue regular scenes in the regular format so it doesn't, like, look all strange, and then maybe they can shoot the action scenes. I don't know. Like, I don't know how all that shit's going to play out. But, you know, hey, it, it ain't just me. Read the reviews, man. Lots of people say it looks fucked up. I thought maybe it was a theater. I was in. I thought maybe the projector was broke. But, no, nah, a lot of people had the exact same comments I did. So that there's a debate for the 40,000 frames. Like, I'm all for advancements of technology, but sometimes just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Because sometimes it just don't work out very well. That's disappointing as hell, man, because I, I know you go. I, now, you're fair. You always give your honest opinion. And I know that you'll probably even admit that you went into the movie knowing you probably wouldn't like it. But you always have an open mind. That being said... I was half expecting the goat to come and see it and say, you know what? The fucking story sucked, but the visuals were great. I take back what I said. James Cameron's a genius. But no, it, it really was awful. It, really it, it was, awful. man. That's another thing with the 40,000 frames, man, is it really makes, like, everything look cheap. It looks like it shot a soap opera video camera and shit, man. And, like, you, like the CGI look, looks more shiny and fake and cartoony. Some like some of the costumes, some of the makeup looks fake. Like you, you can clearly see like some wigs on some motherfuckers glued right straight to their head and shit. Like I don't think, and that's another thing is I don't think this is a good format for these special effect type movies because it's just gonna show you how fake shit really is. Yeah, man. I mean, you can see the fucking rubber nose and the fake beards oh, and everything. <clears throat> like one of the, one of the great things about the slow rates or regular frame rate. Is that the special effects come off a lot fucking better? You don't, you know, you're not, you're not exactly. eyeing it, and and you know, it's it's not scrutinized as much. You fucking accept that shit, you know. I, I don't know, but that, so yeah, I, I, like I, I, I mean, I'm not going. to... Some some people like, oh, it ruined the movie. It didn't ruin the movie for me. I mean, the movie was ruined, but that was because of other reasons. But I just think you better leave well enough alone. And James Cameron, like you're saying, you're going to bring this shit out for Avatar. You like making money on your shit. I don't know. You might get a little tricky. You might get Avatar 2 in there with your 40,000 frames. But I have fucking part three. I don't know, man. So, uh, so, sorry, James Cameron. But what the fuck have you done since Avatar? I mean, was that was exactly. that your fucking opus? Was that, was that it? Was was that the acme of your fucking career? Cause... Blue fuckers plugging tails into their assholes. Was that the best you could come up with? Because <laughs> after you made that money and lost those Oscars, I, I, I don't remember hearing anything else about your new fucking project. Except you got some fucking Avatar land at Disney World coming up. But I mean, what the fuck, man? What's your fucking next movie? I mean, come on, man. You're, you're Terminator. What happened to you, man? You fucking asshole. Now, now, now he's just Avatar. designing cameras for Peter Jackson to use. Now let's get into the movie itself. Getting into how to get the whole cast back. The movie starts out with not Bilbo Baggins. Well, yeah, Bilbo Baggins is old man. But mostly about Frodo Baggins. He comes in, you're like, oh, Elijah Wood's going to be in this shit? How could it be? This movie takes place before his character was even born. Oh, it was a flash forward. He comes in and says, hello, Bilbo. They fucking give her little hobbit hugs. And fucking uh, uh, Frodo Baggins, he makes a sign that says some shit like Bilbo Baggins' house or something. He puts it on the outside. Like, he came into this movie to do a cameo. He made a sign to put on the outside of Bilbo Baggins' house saying, like, do not trespass or some bullshit. And then he walked away. But he came in, he made a fucking paper sign, and it walked away out of the movie. What? Why did we need fucking Elijah Wood back for that? Just to do that? <laughs> you know what? You know what? My 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 cousin Jeremy's kind of a bookworm. He's a fucking dork. I like the kid. He's fucking cool, but he fucking reads. He's a fucking read read worm. And uh, he he read he read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And I, I don't I don't think that Frodo was even in The Hobbit. I think I think they threw this shit in there, man. I mean, it, it's 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 just cameo city. And and the thing is. It's not. It's not like the fucking Star Wars prequels. The book, uh, The Hobbit, was written first. Why didn't they fucking start with that? Why do they have to jump and blow their wad with Lord? Yeah, of the and, and, and the, the thing that's real silly is like Frodo Baggins comes in and they have the old Bilbo Baggins played by Ian Holm who played him in Lord of the Rings, 
and they come in and they laugh and they go and fucking Bill Baggins goes he sits down and starts smoking a pipe and they're like this tells you how fake this movie was man he wasn't even smoking a pipe man like cause CGI smoke came out of his fuck oh, it was so dude, fake looking this, oh, and I better give it worse than the 40,000 frames oh, it was so it's fucking smoke, 3D smoke coming at you man so you have Frodo Baggins come in give his uncle a hug make a sign walk away He sit, then old Bilbo Baggins sits down he blows some CGI smoke the camera pans around the smoke and then it shows Bilbo Baggins sitting on the same fucking bench but it's now it's the young Bilbo Baggins and I'm just like really like that was the epic introduction to this great story and shit was just smoking a pipe and jumping back in time and some shit. yeah man I mean I mean like I, I, I fucking read a ton of reviews on this shit I, I wanted I wanted to get like a, a fucking balanced version but man no nobody fucking like every every critic's worst complaint was that it just fucking went on for too long. Too oh, it was fucking, fucking around, man. It, 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 and that's my complaint. This movie was so fucked around. Ian McKellen, and, and like, but it, it wasn't like fucking around with a lot of character and a lot of story. It was empty fucking around, man. There's a lot of hijinks. Basically, what kickstarts the thing is Ian McKellen comes back, and, and granted, this is supposed to be, I don't know how many years fucking before Lord of the Rings, but Ian McKellen clearly is aged 20 years, and that's another thing, man, it's kind of sad to see him in this, and some scenes, he, he looks like okay, some scenes, it looked like it was wearing him down, man, he looked old, and he, and he just looked really tired, he didn't have a lot of energy and shit, I mean, he just looked like an 80 year old man, and I heard, like, recently, he had some prostate cancer, so maybe he wasn't feeling good when they made this, but it's sad, man, to see, like, a well-respected, critical actor, and he just got the worst fucking, like, beard glued to his face and shit, <laughs> and he can't I, move. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mean, how, wh why did he agree to it? He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the fame. I mean, he's ready to retire and walk in the fucking sunset. And also, go. I, I read that fucking Christopher Lee couldn't do it unless they came to England and filmed. Because he's too, he's so old and decrepit, he can't fucking travel. Yeah, he, he can't fucking leave his room. He's like fucking Howard Hughes, man. They fucking it, have to accommodate him he, like dude, he's he's got a cameo and it's so sad because he walks into the room and he immediately sits down at a table <laughs> um which, 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 which is his table in his fucking apartment in england they exactly have, exactly they had to bring the blue screens there and put them up in his home yeah he, man it was some shit travel. i mean that, that's that's fucking tragic but but see that's that that's the kind of fucking decisions you have to make if you film the fucking prequel which is not even a prequel but you film part two first and then part one second i mean it's, it's bullshit it's like fucking fucking uh anthony hopkins playing hannibal lecter fucking ago. exactly like, man and that's my good. Th that's that's my fucking main thing with this movie my main fucking you know like i guess because like you said when they went back and did the prequel i guess they were trying to do some george lucas shit like how he did with star wars having old characters popped up like, they waste so much of the running time of this movie. And that's another thing, is they took this short-ass book, and they stretched it into three movies, which people are also controversial about people. And I gotta say, that was the wrong decision, because this movie fucks around so much. I'm tired of it. You know, it's just, it's just nothing but fucking around. So, I basically, the first half of the movie is just a reunion tour, bringing out all these old fuckers, Ian McKellen, Chris Lee, fucking Hugo Weaving pops up as a real... Oh, my God. <laughs> a real worthless... <laughs> I, 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 heard, I heard that the fucking dwarves, the dwarves come over to Bilbo's house and have like, you know, eat him out of house and home and have a party. I heard that scene is like 20 fucking minutes long. It's, yeah, what what happens is Ian McKellen marks his door so all the dwarves know where to go. They just start showing up to start eating the food. And you're supposed to like be, I guess, thinking this is the funniest, most comical, whatever. You know what I mean? And these fuckers... Minutes? Oh, shit. all it is is fuckers shit. in bad rubber makeup. <laughs> just just fake, shoving... Fake. It was easy. <laughs> Beards and glue, <laughs> eating, eating fucking fake chicken legs and shit. Oh, that's all they do is eat rubber chicken legs and biscuits and shit. And th and then like they they eat all their thing and then they start to do the dishes. So there's like a ten minute scene of them playing frisbee with dishes and Bilbo Baggins running around going, "Oh my home, my home, don't wreck my home, oh god!" And fucking Ian McKellen's <laughs> telling him to settle down and we're going to go on this big adventure and you're going to go with us. And he's like, "I can, I'm a pussy, I'm Bilbo Baggins." And fucking uh, fuckers just there, like there's literally like a a whole scene of just fuckers piling plates up, throwing them like frisbees. And I'm just sitting there going, Peter Jackson, man, in what world are you living in that you think this is, like, a fun, exciting, like, what, like, in a family movie, too? Like, little kids are going to be bored out of their fucking oh, mind. Bored out of their fucking, I mean, it sounds like you got to be stoned as fucking shit to enjoy that. 
it's, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like this. It's kind of like a, a new bizarre way of doing Dogma '95. You know what I mean? It's just like fucking oh, twenty so... goddamn minutes of a dinner party, uncut, unedited, one camera rolling. Oh, it's, it's so food. fucking. And, and like after they eat all the food, and like there's a lot of belching humor in that too. Like a lot of fuckers oh, belching of course, and shit. Of course there is. Of course. Yeah. Oh man, a lot of cra- like little crude humor belching and shit. And then they throw the plates around, and Bilbo Baggins runs around like a little queen and shit. Oh, don't break my fucking fine china! Then you're like, okay, you're like, you're like, okay, it's over, right? Like they're going to go on this because they're talking about this big adventure they're going to go on, right? So you're like, you're like, the fuckers ate, they're ready go to go. On. Yeah, go on the adventure. What do they do? They take the time to sing a fucking song, <laughs> all the drawers. <laughs> With the song 20 minutes also? Yeah, like, <laughs> it, I mean. Now you've got the hour mark, so. <laughs> exactly. I'm sitting there, fucking, I made all my popcorn at this point in time. It's, it's so deep into the movie, nothing's happened, and now some fuckers are going to take a time You're to sing a song. Food. You gotta take a piss. <laughs> fucking people yawning and sleeping next to you in the goddamn theater. It's like, oh, oh man. We got 12 hours left to go, and no one's even gone on a fucking adventure yet. And I'll tell you what, too, man, like, I, like I, you know, I, I don't give a shit. I've seen the other Lord of the Rings movies. I had to wait till I saw the first one in the theaters. I said, fuck this. I'm not waiting around for three years to see the conclusion. So I waited 10 years. It was just a, about a year and a half ago. I sat down and watched the Lord of the Rings movies on Blu-ray, and I watched them in, like, 45-minute chunks. I couldn't sit down and watch them. Here I am fucking sitting there watching this long, slow, boring shit. And then the the theater, it wasn't packed, but it was like, there's a good 15 people in there. And I could tell, man, they was all excited when they come in. They had smiles on their faces and shit. And, and like, they just started watching all this fucking around, man. And it was like being in a fucking, uh, like, a morgue, man. Like, everybody was just sitting there going into a fucking yeah. coma. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and go, go. Like, we know this movie made a shitload of money. We, we know people pay to see it, but... And and look, I'm 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 trying to be open minded here. Have you heard anyone say anything good about this movie? I'm serious. No, anyone? I've I've only heard excuses that that yeah, yeah, that yeah, all the excuses. trilogy's so great and, and like this ain't the trilogy, man. This is some new shit. And like and like just to piggyback this movie onto the other ones, and that's another thing too, man. It's like I thought like, well, it's a, a, a dawn of a new storytelling and shit. There's going it was exactly like the other ones. It was like they took scenes out of the other movies and redid them, but shitty, man. Like. And, like, that's another thing, too, is, like, it's so lowbrow, man. It's so fucking crude. Like, you had them fuckers belching. And this is supposed to be family shit. You had the fuckers belching. There was this one dwarf motherfucker that lived out in the woods by himself. He was a friend to animals and shit. He had these little CGI hedgehogs. I'm sitting there, like, like this boring scene of CGI hedgehogs running around the fucking forest was more entertaining than what I've seen the hour hey, before. Hey, no, was that also 20 minutes? <laughs> it, it was... Because <laughs> now you're at the 90 minute mark. We're halfway yeah, home. I mean, it was a good 13 and a half minutes. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, anyway, like the fucker, he lifts up his hat and he lets some birds like come sleep under his hat because he's a friend to the animals and shit. Well, these fucking birds have been living up in this hat for so long, man. I'm not bullshitting. His whole long fucking hair and his whole wig beard and shit. He had bird shit running down the side of his face, going into his beard. Almost, the bird shit was almost into his mouth. <laughs> all white, caked up bird shit on the side of his face. I'll bet you anything that was not in the book. That was Peter Jackson's kiwi ass. Wanted to make some farty poopo humor. Gross. Movie. <laughs> it was some gross shit, man. But it. it, it sick. So like like we get back to the journey, the whatever Bilbo Baggins is with all the drawers, and they always call him a pussy and stuff, like challenging his manhood, saying he ain't gonna be up to the challenge and shit. So the whole movie, the only real story is that he has to prove to the drawers that he's a badass. So like what happens is like you know them trolls that was in it that that like they're real, they're like really big, they're like twenty feet what tall and the, shit. So the ogres. Yeah, the trolls ogres where well they steal a couple horses, so Bilbo Baggins like tries to get them back. So because he's a hobbit, he crawls in to the troll camp. There's like three of them, and they're like making some stew and shit, and they're getting ready to throw the horses in there. Well, one of like and this is what I don't like about Peter Jackson, his fucking dead alive, fucking gross out bullshit. One of the one of them keeps like sneezing and like blowing snot like into the stew, and the fuckers are eating it and shit. So you got Bilbo crawling around, and you got this troll fucking keeps sneezing and blowing his nose and shit. He's like looking for a snot rag to blow all his snot into. He he accidentally picks up Bilbo Baggins 
uses Bilbo Baggins as a fucking Kleenex, blows all this snot on Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins is dripping head to toe his whole entire fucking costume. He's got uh, troll snot in his mouth and shit. It's so fucking gross, man. That like, doesn't even make any sense. How do you pick up a little man if you get the Kleenex? <laughs> I don't know, but he what blew his fuck? nose. And then, like, and, the, and then they get all startled. Like He's like, oh, this isn't a fucking Kleenex. This is a fucking Hobbit. And they're like, oh. Little, little hairy, little hairy queen. Yeah. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins is running around and fucking uh, snot drip. Like, his whole fucking thing is just snot drip and snot on his face. This is gross out shit, man. Like, I know they're going to be, like, at the end of the, you know, beginning of next year when they decide the Oscars, they're going to be, like, you know, trying to, like, put this as a real classy movie, great for families, really rich and indulging and shit. Like, this was just some fucking shit that you would have seen in Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. This is not some... <laughs> Everything sounds so fake. I mean, I, I don't think they're gonna win anything next year. I really, I, I don't see best makeup. I don't see best directing. I don't see best sound effect. I mean, I think it was just a fucking put together, expensive bullshit movie, man. I don't, I don't see anything coming out of it Ex- except, except fucking, fucking Warner Brothers cleaning house and making bank for the next two. But seriously, it seems, it, it seems like a bunch of horseshit. Uh, it is, man. Like they basically just like the first. Uh, two hours, they're basically just walking through the woods, not a lot happening, silly humor. Then finally, like, the orcs, the goblin motherfuckers who are the villains, who really, honestly, that's the only shit I liked in the original Lord of the Rings. I liked the orc armies and they, how they was always fighting people and shit. Well, there's a, there's a, there's not, like, an army, but there's a small band of orcs, maybe about 30 orcs running around, and they ride around on big werewolves and shit, like, not even horses, they have werewolves, CGI werewolves they run around in. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was the only cool part about the movie, man, because, like, I'm, like, I really expected this one, because they had to stretch this book out in the three movies, I thought we was going to get some character and some backstory, I thought fucking Bilbo Baggins were going, like, you, like, you don't have no clue who Bilbo Baggins is in this movie, he's just a little pussy running around, like, he never has a backstory. He's a he is. He fucking Ian McKellen, like, he, you know, Gandalf, like, they really play it up, like, Gandalf is this big badass, and everybody has respect for him. He never talks about his story. Like, the only person in the whole movie had a story was their, the leader of the Jors. They did a flashback to, like, he fo- like he fought the orcs back in the day, and he killed this one big orc, and he, like, now, that's why he's the badass Jor. Only one mother, and this is an ensemble cast, man, there's, like, 15 of these Jors running around, plus Gandalf, plus fucking all the cameos with yeah man you, you, you got fucking happy sleepy grumpy dopey doc and every everyone oh it, it, like you never know any of these fuckers names you don't know, in this but one faces. but 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 by the way you know i, I wanted to uh, kind of take the time to say that uh you know we ain't complaining that it's a long movie i mean everybody's complaining that it's a long movie you know we're happy to see a fucking three-hour movie i'll fucking watch a four-hour movie what the what the goat is saying and i happen to agree with is like Show me a fucking story. Don't show yes. me bullshit. Yes. Don't, don't don't just press record and then don't stop it. Show me some fucking story, some character development. And, and I, you know exactly. Here and here's my big complaint with this man is you know I could get go through and tell examples, but I, there's no reason for me to because as shitty as this movie is, everybody's gonna go see it. They gotta see it for themselves. They won't take my word for it. They won't take Roger Ebert's word for it. They, like, they don't take any... Everybody's right. gotta go see it for themselves. So, yeah. But, but yeah, but like, this movie was just some fucking around. And like, here's my problem. This is a prequel. This is a whole brand new story starting with like 15 characters we've never seen before. And like, they don't even take the time to set shit up. It's just like, they expect you to know who everybody is. Like, it's a sequel, like it's fucking part six, but it's not. It's starting over. It's part zero. Like, you have to bring right, some yeah. story and some foundation. Deliver. Give us something. Give us something to, 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 to make us salivate and want, want, want more. But, you know, don't, don't make us watch it and want less. And, and like we said, they're building up a trilogy, and all they did was fucking play around and rub their balls and shit on screen like nothing fuck like there was no story like yeah the only story is we know we're going they're going to go fight a dragon which by the way you never see in this entire fucking movie it's just like oh we got to go kill this dragon like it's not like the dragon's flying around killing everybody and they're they're just like oh there's a dragon we got to kill it like oh but we never see shit about this dragon finally the orcs catch up to him there's a couple of battles and shit and i have to say the battles and the action is what kept me going through the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This action in this one, man, like, it's shitty, man. Like, it's really, like, 
probably half the quality, if that, of the Lord of the Rings battle scenes, man. Like, it's just some fucking around, and it's that real bumbling action where, like, everybody's, like, fighting, but nobody's getting killed. And, like, the biggest cock tease of this movie, man, is, like, they keep doing this shit where... Because it's a big group of people, man, and they're in some dangerous situations. So you think, well, some of these motherfuckers are expendable, especially since they ain't even given them, let alone a backstory. Most of these motherfuckers don't even have a name. So you're like... Nobody dies, right? Nobody dies. You think they're all cannon fodder? They keep killing them off, and then they, and then like they turn a corner. They're like, oh, all these guys. There's literally a scene where fuckers. There's like about three scenes in this movie where fuckers fall off of giant cliffs, fucking big boulders fall down and crush them and kill them. And like the movie actually shows the characters reacting all sad, like they died, and then they just go around the corner and oh wait, they're alive, and they grab each other and hug each other. No, not only. Not only does nobody die, Phil, nobody dies, but fuckers fall off the side of mountains and don't even have a scratch on them. Not even a fucking scratch. It's, 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 it's a kid's book. I mean, I mean, this, this shit was written in 1913. This is the kind of shit that fucking parents read their goddamn kids to get them to fall asleep. No one's supposed to die. All of a sudden now it's a PG-13 fucking epic. It's supposed to be all fucking serious and shit. I, I, I mean... That's one thing that bothered me about the original trilogy, Lord of the Rings. Like, fucking nobody died. And you think they would. Uh, very few people died. Very few. But but also, go, going back to what you were saying, like, even though it's a prequel, by definition, it's a sequel. Because yes, it's a movie made after the movie. So you expect more, right? And, you know, you, you mentioned you mentioned George Lucas earlier in the, in the Star Wars prequels. Uh, it makes me think about the fucking Darth Maul lightsaber scene. Like, even though it's a prequel, the first movie, it was supposed to be the first installment. That was the fucking most badass lightsaber duel of all time. Because George Lucas knew that even though this is a prequel, this follows the first three movies. I have to step it up. And he did. Exactly. And it sounds like what you're telling us is that Peter Jackson did not step it up. He no, was supposed you, to have a bigger, better, badder, more powerful, and it was just fucking... What, what, wah, wah, yeah, wah. What, what, what it was was we got two more movies coming after this, oh, so, so let's let's not blow our load quite yet. Let's take it easy. Like, th- these fuckers will just pay just because it has Lord of the Rings name on it, so let's just fuck around and make some easy money. And, like, I gotta say, like, really, the worst part of the movie was there's actually... They have the scene in this movie where Bilbo Baggins gets the fucking ring from Gollum, and, like, it's so shitty, man, like, I thought this was gonna be an epic, awesome scene, he just wanders into a cave, Gollum's, like, running around there with his little goblin shit, going, and, like, he walks by, and fucking, the ring just falls out of Gollum's pocket, and fucking Bilbo Baggins picks it up, not knowing what it is, and then he tries to sneak out, and Gollum catches him, so they have this riddle off, and I and I have seen some nerds being like, "Oh, this was the best scene of the movie." They and it's just like corny shit, like like what has three legs and no arms but doesn't do this, and and then Gollum's got to go, "Oh, Mister Baggins, <laughs> like <laughs> your your mother." Yeah, it's no, so mother. you can't even understand. I don't even understand why this Gollum character is so fucking popular, man. You can't understand anything he says. He's just a CGI motherfucker, like with no hair and so. He's not even real. No, nah, it's real. just like. And, and by the way, man, I mean, talking about blowing your load, they didn't show the dragon, but they showed him getting the ring in the first one. It doesn't seem to make any fucking sense at all. It, you know? Well, not only does it not make sense, but they show him getting the ring, but it's just like a whatever moment. Like, fucking Gollum doesn't even know he has the ring till the very end after he loses the little riddle contest with fucking Bilbo Baggins. Oh, well, uh, when he says, what is in my pocket or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cousin Jeremy told me about that. Yeah, it's it, not, it, it sounds it, so lame. It's, it's, not, it's not even a riddle, is it? No, no. It's dude. It, it's just like, yeah. That's how he beats him because he can't oh, guess what's I'm, in his. By the way, sorry for the spoiler alert, but don't worry. You got two movies left, and we haven't seen. So. <laughs> well, well, don't worry. Not only is it like nothing happens in this movie. Like I can say this happened or that happened, but is it really a spoiler when nothing happens? Does it really happen? Well, most of it's CGI, so I mean, literally doesn't happen. Hey, hey, hey! That reminds me, go. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, you know why they probably didn't show the dragon in this movie? Because fucking James Cameron hadn't figured out how to fucking show it in the worst way yet. He's got two exactly, more years. Exactly. They're, 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 they're still they're still working on the technology. He, he's daisy chaining fucking PlayStation twos together to create something. He's, 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 yeah, he's like, no, we can't show it yet because it's it's not ready. It won't be ready. I mean, we got to make it awful and shitty. So. He's got the makers of Xbox three sixty figuring out a way. To fucking- yeah, he's got fucking Microsoft joining with the Dreamcast in Japan, and they're fucking working on it. 
but shit, man. Well, hey, man, you know, you know what? No, go. I mean, I, yeah. I don't think- we, we shouldn't go on anymore. No, I, the, 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 well, yeah, that's honestly, man, that's all I have to say because it don't matter what I have to say because you fuckers are going to see it and either you're going to be just the average moviegoer like myself who don't have a dog in this fight and you're going to call it like it is or you're going to make the excuses, oh, there's two more movies, you could get, but that does not cover up for the fact that this movie did not have a plot, did not have a story, did not have a beginning, middle, and end. It just fucking rambled on and on and on and nothing fucking worthwhile nothing emotionally engaging really happened in the entire fucking movie it just was like a video game with cgi shit f- swirling around the screen it was like the fucking and and, and also like when, when you when you make a movie and you call it part one knowing there's going to be part two and three that's kind of risky it especially is especially when movie it making is. is a business and i i personally it's just phil nuts opinion it only works when you shoot a whole bunch of shit and you realize you got too much shit, but it's still a great movie and you got to separate it like Kill Bill 1 and 2. That's when it works. But when you go into a movie saying, well, this is just part one so we can make it shitty because we got part two and three. It's, it's, not, it's not good business sense. And as far as the cinematic quality, of the art goes, it's, it's not really good to the fans. It's not good for the people who are paying money to see it because you're still paying 16, 17 bucks for a 3D, IMAX, 8 frame. Oh, oh, that's another thing too, man, is I got to say is like, like, I mean, it makes it sound like I hated this movie. I did not hate this movie. I just walked out depressed and bored and fucking wish I didn't waste my time. But I was lucky enough to, through fucking my tricky ways, I saw this shit, 40,000 frame 3D. I saw this shit for zero dollars and zero cents, and I still walked away with a bad taste in my mouth. I cannot imagine. I would be, I would be fucking ready to kill somebody if I paid $17 to see this fucking piece of, three hour piece of fucking around. Right, and by the way, we talked about earlier why, why I didn't see it. I didn't see it because I did not want to pay 17 bucks to see exactly. it. Exactly. You, you had yourself a free ride. Yeah. I wasn't going to cough up the money to see this bullshit. I'm right. sorry, but, you know, if I had 17 bucks, I'd be going to see fucking, a fucking triple feature of Django Unchained, Les Miserables, and uh, fucking... You would, you, would, you would have seen every fucking other normal fucking movie in the Two movie theater. 24 frame... Right. Fuckers. Like, like all, that's another thing. All this new technology is just a way to fucking make you pay more for a movie ticket. Well, right, but, well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, just to wrap this up and put this fucker to bed, is <clears throat> this movie came off as part eight in a series... Like, it just seemed like there was no more story left to tell, which is a big problem when you're doing a whole brand new trilogy. They were supposed to be bringing the new shit. They just looked like they were tired. I actually, the other day I was reading an old Fangoria back from years ago when Peter Jackson made King Kong. And he actually said in this article that he did The Lord of the Rings and he did King Kong right after. And he said he was burnt out and that's why he didn't want to come back. You know what I mean? Like, that just shows, like... He was pushed into this shit. He had, like, people telling him, like, hey, you got to do this for our... Because he, he owned the fucking uh, video game fucking special effects company that did all the, the CGI in this movie. So he had a lot of, like, belts to wear, and he had a lot of shit weighing down his shoulders to bring these big movies back to New Zealand and do all this shit. And I got to say, like, these circumstances, these pressure cooker things, like a burnt-out director, the way Peter Jackson seems to be right now, man... This was just not the right environment or circumstances to try to make a trilogy of epic movies. Like, I hope, like, once all this shit washes away and he takes a couple years off, Peter Jackson come back and do some more good movies. But right now, in his frame of mind or whatever, Peter Jackson is about as useless as a fucking pair of tits on a chimpanzee. I mean, really. He, he, he is. He is, man. He is. Now, now my, my prediction is that this is going to be inversely proportional to the success of the Lord of the Rings, where each Lord of the Rings sequel made more than the first. I predict that each Hobbit sequel is going to make less and less. Now it's already greenlit. They're going to make them. It's already shot. They're already shooting part two right now. So so the the, the train has left the station. It ain't stopping. Yeah. yeah, It's on. It's on. It's on like Kong, which sucked. But I, I personally think that the hype will go down. The sales will go down. And whether or not the studio makes a killing or not, statistically, it's going to show that that it, it's going to be less and less successful until part three comes out and then nobody gives a shit. And they're going to be praying to get the DVD sales to fucking make up the money because people are already catching on. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 maybe you can answer this. Are they, are they shooting the other two in the same frame rate and shit? Or are, are they, are that, they that, that, I, that I don't know. I don't think they come because like they're being real hush hush on yeah. the frame rate shit right now because like there there's actually only 
like I think it's 468 theaters in the entire country showing the frame rate. So they really buried that shit. They just, you know, that was something they had to do to keep Peter Jackson happy, or maybe Peter Jackson. I don't even know. If he likes the high frame rate. Maybe he just figures I shot it this way. Might as well release it. So I don't think that's really going to be a trend that's going to be catching on big either with more hobbits or just movies in general. But yeah, we'll see. Right. We'll see. I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. Like, I we mean, don't have, we don't have the answers. No, I do not. We'll see, we'll see. Well, you know, it'll it'll be interesting to talk about. We don't want to beat this one to death because if we're still fucking around and drinking in two years from now or well, one year, whenever the fuck part two comes out. We're gonna have to revisit this and talk about. We'll, what we'll take, yeah, we'll table the Hobbit discussion for now. We'll let shit play out. Uh, it's only been out two weeks now. I saw it when I saw it. It was only out for four or five days, so I can't really tell you what the the reaction is. I think it's gonna, you know, everybody's got to see it. It's got to sink in. But but I think there's gonna be some denial too, because I I think because you know it's a lot of the critics, man. They won't slam it. They're like, yeah, it's like they'll, they'll say it sucks, but they'll say, but but I I'm going to be there for part two and part three. So like you know how this fucking cheap society is, man. Like nobody can stand up and just say, hey, you did a great trilogy before, or a trilogy that people liked before, like. Like, this is just a cash grab, but nobody wants to call because everybody wants to cross their fingers and believe in the magic of fucking Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like you said. It's like, it's like no, nobody's bashing it. Everyone just has excuses. But, but no one's loving it either. No one's loving it. it, 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 it exactly. But you know what? I didn't make the movie. You didn't make the movie, Phil D., so we don't have to make the excuses. <laughs> we just don't. Like, fucking movie. don't yeah, you don't even care enough to see that shit, so. All right, well, I think we've been rambling enough along with this fucking bullshit. That's so, it. Uh, so so, I, I so before we sign off, to just say, I, you know, whatever holidays you celebrate or don't celebrate, I don't care if you don't celebrate any but holidays, hopefully you at least get a day off work coming up soon or something. So happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, whatever other things are like whatever maybe you're just an atheist just fucking stay home drink some beer when some holidays are on but but everybody stay safe don't drink and drive have a good time and fucking you know drink but don't drop i mean drink, exactly. drink heavily drink. try to get you some watch some good movies watch some hillbilly bullshit watch some you know rough is whatever, whatever turns you on watch something good get yourself uh nice and hammered or nice and high whatever you got it going on enjoy it it is a holiday have a good time give to the People, give to your loved ones. Don't forget about people who are suffering out there and all that other bullshit. And uh, thanks for listening to to us. Yeah, exactly. And even more important than than humanitarian causes, make sure you subscribe to Hillbilly DVD Reviews podcast on iTunes. It's it's, it's 100% free. It is. Make sure you go to fucking YouTube.com slash Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Drop us a line at Hillbilly DVD Reviews at gmail.com. Fucking joy to the world and fucking whatever. Stay drunk. Adios, America. As Bilbo Baggins cleared the bukkake from his eyes, he knew that he would never shit right once again. But at last, he had earned the respect of his dwarf comrades, and the adventure would continue on for another day at least.